are you doing with this little business card right here? It's so cute with its little floral print design on the back. I didn't know you were getting ready to make your own business cards already, sweetheart. But I guess that makes sense since mommy's been raising you to be a boss babe ever since you were born. Let's take a look at what you wrote on your business card. This is so exciting. Braylon MLAE Consulting. Ooh, I love that little shovel logo. Did you get that from mommy? Yes, you did. We'll talk about the shovel logo in just a minute, won't we? You did a great job drawing that. Braylon Emily Consulting. Build your own course to sell shovels in the gold rush. $420.69 to enroll today. Ooh, babe, I think that's a little cheap for your course, but you know what? I do like that you did it for the meme. I'm very proud of you. Nice. Nice. As you guys may know, this is my daughter, Braylon Emily. I am raising her to be a little boss babe just like mommy as I use her in all of my boss babe content. In fact, Braylon Emily not that long ago decided to launch her very own course on Instagram. And this was the post that she wrote to celebrate launching it. Let's read your post, sweetie. You did such a good job. Don't scroll past. This is important. My imaginary three-year-old daughter, Braylon Emily is finally launching her very own course. You may have noticed that by Biologically, Braylon Emily was assigned American Girl doll at birth. One of the biological qualities that American Girl dolls have is that they're from history. That means that Braylon Emily has access to the 1949 gold rush. Braylon Emily knows a lot of you are probably planning to head out and dig for gold in some of those hills, but she also knows that in order to sell gold, you need a shovel. Have you always wanted to make money selling shovels that others can use to dig for gold? Then get ready for this. Braylon Emily is launching her very own shovel shovel selling course. Learn the basics of shovel selling and if you sign up today, she'll even throw in her bonus webinar about how to make your own shovel selling course as well. A webinar in 1949? Guess you'll have to take her course to find out. Drop an emoji in the comments. Dollar sign, I want more free information. Stars, I want the free webinar. Keep scrolling with no likes or comments means I hate children and don't want your daughter to succeed. Braylon, I love the emotional manipulation in that post as well and you're doing such a good job on these little business cards. Where did you even possibly find the template for these? Well, mom, I remember you bought me that book for American Girl Dolls Who Want to Go Into Business, the little American Girl Doll Boss Bay Business Self-Help Book, and I found the template in there. You are so smart, sweetie. Would it possibly be this book, Money Makers, Good Sense for Girls, from the American Girl Library, published in 1998 by Pleasant Company? Is that the book that you read, sweetheart? Yeah, it is, mom, and now I have so many new business ideas that I can't wait to share with the world. Well, good for you, sweetheart. How about we go through this book today with the entire audience and talk about what in this book resonates, what resonated with me when I was your age, and much more in today's book review video. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. All right, sweetie, let's go back on the shelf. It's time for your daily allotted 10 minute break so that you and the other dolls don't unionize. What's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. Today is once again about both. We are doing an American Girl doll book review of probably my favorite book published by American Girl Library when I was a kid, Money Makers Good Sense for Girls. If you're new to this channel though, take a minute and don't forget to subscribe because multiple times a week I put out new videos about books and business. And while you're at it, don't forget to check out my second channel, Your Morning Guru, where every single weekday at 7 a.m. Central Time, I live stream about many of the same topics. And in addition to that, don't forget to ring the little notification bell on this channel. We are going to be diving into a lot of ways to make money. <laughs> you just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. <laughs> but guess what is cool about this? We're getting a little meta because this video is also making money because I have a sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Magic Spoon, which has honestly become my favorite cereal brand during my past seven months of eating it. If you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably heard me talk about how much I love working out and lifting weights and how I'm always trying to find ways to add more protein to what I eat each day. Because Magic Spoon is a high protein cereal, I've been loving having a bowl for breakfast every day to get lots of protein before heading off to the gym. Also, in case you haven't noticed, it's September 
September now, my favorite month of the year. I love that this is the month when fall is starting, and it just so happens that one of my favorite fall flavors is cinnamon, which is also my favorite flavor of Magic Spoon cereal to eat in the morning. That cinnamon flavor is getting me in the mood for fall. Now, if only the weather outside would get the message and cool down a little bit. Magic Spoon cereal has zero grams of sugar, with the exception of the honey nut flavor, which has one gram of sugar per serving because of the real honey they used to make it. 13 to 14 grams of protein per serving, and only four to five net grams of carbs per serving, along with around 140 calories per serving. Magic Spoon is also now offering cereal bars as well, which have one gram of sugar, 10 grams of protein, four net grams of carbs, and 130 calories per bar. Magic Spoon cereals and cereals cereal bars are keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. So click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety box and use my code SAVVY to get $5 off. You can choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and maple waffle flavors, plus other awesome flavors including honey nut, blueberry muffin, and cinnamon roll, which as I mentioned is my favorite. You can also add the cookies and cream and cocoa peanut butter flavor cereal bars to your variety box as well. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. For my Canadian and British viewers out there, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and to the UK as well as within the US. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and check out that link below where you can use the code SAVVY to get $5 off or go to magicspoon.com SAVVY to save $5 off of your order today. Thank you again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. So thank you to my sponsor and also thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for continuing to support this channel. Y'all check out the description below where Patreon supporters who give $5 a month and up can list their own small businesses, social media, causes they care about, whatever they like. So go ahead and check them out in the description below. And now let's get into Money Makers, Good Sense for Girls. So this is the book where my daughter Braylon Emily made her own business card. There's some business card templates in the back that are like perforated. As you can see, I took some of them out. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this. When I first opened up this book, I noticed that I had put my signature in it and I wrote Savvy Lizer in a completely illegible signature, age 10. So then I followed up under it and wrote Savvy Lizer, age 29. That's pretty cool. So once again, this book was published in 1998 by Pleasant Company Publications, which was American Girls Company before they were bought out by Mattel around this era, around the late 90s as well. So to get started, let's take a look at the opening letter from my childhood boss babe icon, Pleasant Roland. Dear American Girl, have you ever wanted to make money of your own? Then add a new buzzword to your vocabulary, entrepreneur. It means someone who starts and manages a business. Fun fact, this is where I first learned the word entrepreneur as a kid. So shout out to Pleasant Roland for teaching me that word. What does it take to be a good entrepreneur? Imagination to see what people need. Creativity to come up with an idea that fills that need. Spirit and spunk to get to work. I hope you don't mean spunk literally. Determination to finish what you start. Courage to believe in yourself when others tell you an idea won't succeed. A lot of boss babe language in this, but we'll get into some of the good parts too, don't worry. To begin, decide what you're good at, what you love, and what you have fun doing. Do you love animals or little kids? Try a dog walking service or run a children's story hour. Like to get organized and keep things tidy? Try a silver polishing service or often to straighten people's cupboards. These are the skills you can put to work in a business of your own. After all, the real secret to earning money is to do something well, love what you do, and have the courage to do it. Money Makers is full of ideas, advice, and tools to help you on your way. Good luck, Pleasant T. Roland, American Girl Entrepreneur. She is the founder of American Girl Company. She was my boss babe icon as a kid. She was the one I wrote fan mail to. I hope one day I get to meet her because honestly, like I'd just love to talk business with her. Like that's my dream, dude. And I'd be like, girl, why'd you sell to Mattel? The money, that's the answer. So that opening letter right there was basically what almost every entrepreneurship book says and then doesn't say anymore, right? Like if we were to read Girl Wash Your Face, if we were to read the 10X Rule, if we Boss Up, that's a book we reviewed on this channel a while ago. If we were to read a lot of these stupid business self-help books that I roast on this channel, a lot of them give you this advice in the opening letter and then they stop there. They don't give you any more specific advice than that. No soup for you. This book outdoes it. I will say I appreciate how this book, which is targeted 
at kids has more tangible business advice than almost any business book targeted at adults that I've ever reviewed on this channel. However, that doesn't mean that this book is perfect. So let's start with the 10 sensible tips. I'm bisexual, so I love puns. I'm not gonna read all the tips, but there were some that stood out to me. So one of them was number four, start smart, which I wrote in the margin. This advice is already more specific than business guru books, lol. So start smart. Figure out how much money you'll need to start your business. Write down all the supplies and materials and list their prices. Can you borrow this money from a parent or family member and pay it back with the money you make later? Or can you earn it doing an odd job? Be sure to write down a goal of how much money you want to earn with your money maker. Your goal will change over time, but it will help you get started. Determine whether you'll need extra space too. If you plan to make a craft corner in the basement, ask first. Wow. That's so much more advice than I ever got in Jenna Kutcher's stupid book, How Are You Really? Number five, set a fair price. Your price should be fair to you and your customer. When setting prices for things you make, first add up the cost of all your materials. You can cut some costs by buying supplies in discount stores. You want to be able to pay for those costs and earn a little more for yourself. That's called profit. But don't charge more than what people are willing to pay. Compare your prices to what other products like yours cost. If you're trying to set an hourly rate for a service, find out what other kids your age charge for similar work. And you were only going to pay me 30? You're getting 30 grand? I'm getting a thousand! You guys are getting paid? And I was like, this already has a clearer and better definition of the word profit than any book written by an MLM boss babe or someone who's spoken at an MLM conference because they don't want you to think about profit. They want you to think about total revenue so that they can keep exploiting you and you won't notice. Meanwhile, this book's over here like, here's how to calculate profit. I also love, there's a story being told in the illustrations in these pages of this girl starting a business called Cute as a Button where she decorates objects with buttons and then eventually goes and sells them. It's just really, really cute. I love it. And then of course, number 10, add it up, which I wrote in the comments, which I wrote again in the margins. OMG, this is better advice than books give adults. Once again, measure how successful your money maker is by keeping records of how much money you make and spend. If you earn more than $400 in one year, you may need to pay taxes to the government. Talk to your parents about what, if anything, you owe. Being a successful money maker also means managing your money well. You deserve to spend a little money, but putting some back into your business for supplies or advertising. Save the rest for something special. Look at that. This book's like legit business education for kids. No wonder I was obsessed with this book as a child. Why are you so obsessed with me? I'm sure you guys are probably listening to this like, oh my God, yeah, no wonder Savvy wrote her name and signed this book as a, as a small child. Then the book goes into specific ways to start different types of businesses, which once again, I really like. I even wrote over here, this chapter is full of specific advice on walking and watching animals, etc. So this chapter is Critter Cash. It's all about how to make money like pet sitting and having a dog walking service and things like that. The next chapter is called Snack Shop and it's about how to make money with food and things like that. Now... I remember reading this chapter and like I, so many things when I was a kid, my mom was also like a very practical person. My mom is a combination of an extremely practical person and also an extremely overprotective Polish mother. Anyone out there who's got a Polish mother, you know how they are, right? My mom is a very overprotective Polish mother who wants to feed you all the time. And she's also like a very practical person. So you combine those things and I'll say things like, hey mom, in my American Girl Doll Entrepreneurship Advice book, I read about how I could start a little snack shop and make money selling snacks. What should I do? And my mom would be like, oh no, Savvy, you can't do that. You can't be making, you can't, you can't be selling snacks out on the street because you don't have a permit for that. You need to have a permit in order to sell food and you especially need a food handling permit from the government. And if you don't have a food handling permit, they can shut you down. You can get in big legal trouble. So don't do that. So that's what my mom's like. So I wasn't able to do a lot of the ideas in this book because my mom would be like, oh no, 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 no. You need a permit for that. <laughs> So here we go. This book also includes a lot of true stories from young child entrepreneurs. I won't show their photos, but there are true stories from these child entrepreneurs. And I was always like, some of them I was jealous of and some of them I was a little judgmental of because some of them really didn't do that well in their businesses. And I was like, this is a success story really. But anyway, on page 22, we get one of these success stories about an entrepreneur who has a snack shop. And it says, fair prices and the right location are the keys to this person's success. And I was like, a lot of these stories rely on living in the affluent suburbs. They just do. When I was reading a lot of these success stories, I'm like, if you don't live in the affluent suburbs, and also if you have a mom who is like, you don't need a permit, then there's absolutely no way you can do any of these things in this book. However, I do appreciate a lot of the specific advice. So in this, it has a section about 
each of these true stories breaks down like how they started up their business, how much money they made, their worst day, their best day, and their advice. And I think this is really cute. I thought this one was funny. For her worst business day, she wrote, I was 10 feet down our driveway instead of right up on the curb. Kids were drawing at the table and it looked like we were just playing. I made only $3 that day. Cause she was selling her lemonade and snacks and stuff and people didn't realize that it was a business. They thought they were just playing. And I was like, girl, this is relatable to me as an adult. Because if you remember my business book, Savvy Business Owner that I released in 2020, I had this chapter at the end called the customer is not always right. And in that section, I talked about some of my worst experiences with customers. Dude, adults do this shit. Like kids came up to the table and just started drawing and playing. Dude, you wouldn't believe it, but adults do this. I would have my tent set up to sell my books and plushies and adults would come up to it and grab my colored pencils and start drawing with them and like start setting their stuff all over my display. One lady put her shoes, like her sneakers on my display after she finished her workout at the rec center. And I was like, woman, are you mad? Bitch, are you for real? What are you doing? So anyway, then that makes new customers not come to my table because other people are being obnoxious and they're not even buying anything. That's relatable, girl. For secret to success, it says, I sell brownies, lemon squares, cookies, and glasses of lemonade for 25 cents each. Some people say 25 cents is a steal, but I think I sell more because it's such a bargain. Hold up, we need to look up the inflation rate since 1998 because this is gonna bug the shit out of me. 1998 to 2022 inflation calculator. <laughs> Value of $1 from 1998 to 2022. $1 in 1998 is worth $1.82 today. So by that logic, $1.82 divided by four. Okay, so she was selling, that would be equivalent to about 45 to 46 cents today. Girl, raise your prices. How are you possibly selling them for that low? Yeah, it is. You think you sell more because it's such a steal. There's no way you're covering your materials costs, let alone your time spent. You're making far under minimum wage with that. Girl, raise your prices. You deserve more. Invest in yourself, boss babe. Yeah, and then this is the part I wrote in the margin here. So it says, Molly's advice, set up your stand in a spot that's close to your house. It's good to have a school, park, or library nearby. Put up bright, colorful signs with an arrow pointing toward your stand. To find garage sales where you can set up a stand, look for ads in the paper and keep your eye out for sales signs in the neighborhood. Then ask if you can sell at the sale. And I just wrote, lol, my mom wouldn't let me start this kind of business because of permits. <laughs> my mom also didn't like me selling Girl Scout cookies door to door because she thought that that would bother people. In a me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Open your bag. What's in your bag? Yeah, I'll kill you, bitch. Come here. Come here. But to be fair, I didn't turn out to be a boss, babe. I kind of did. So the next chapter is all about like babysitting businesses and things like that. And I thought it was interesting, the whole babysitting section, because there's also an American Girl Doll book called The Babysitter's Handbook. And I read this book so many times. I loved The Babysitter's Handbook. I knew how to babysit back and front because I read that book through so many times. I knew every single babysitter tip. And I read The Babysitter's Club books like nobody's business. I loved The Babysitter's Club because I related to Christy because I was a little boss babe who was really aggressive just like Christy was. Dude, Christy, as I told you guys, a couple weeks ago. I related to Sam from iCarly, Helga from Hey Arnold, Angelica from Rugrats, and Christy from the Babysitter's Club. I related to all the girls who were aggressive and loud and whether or not they were a bully depended on which property we were in at the time, okay? I loved babysitting media. So isn't it kind of a shock to look back and realize that I never once babysat in my life? I read so much babysitting stuff and I thought it was so interesting and I just was like, I'm gonna be the best babysitter ever. And then I just never started babysitting. I guess it's just because I didn't really know any kids. My parents didn't really know any kids. Like, really know any kids. All my cousins, and like my brother and I are the same age. We're both 29 and my cousins were all like around that same age range as well. So they weren't having kids yet when I was a teenager and they also weren't kids themselves when I was a teenager so I just I just didn't really know any kids. So then it's telling this story from this girl Annie who makes money babysitting and tutoring kids and under the money made section it says $300. I made $5 an hour tutoring a girl in reading. When I babysit I make $2 an hour but I made more money tutoring because I brought books and word games to words. And I'm just like $2 even in 1998 that is abysmal. Okay once again, let's do the inflation calculator. So a dollar in 1998 is a dollar. So we're gonna multiply two by 1.82. So you were making 364 an hour. Girl, I hope you were making tips. You should be charging at least $10 an hour to babysit. Listen lady, nobody messes with my dumb babysit me. And that's if you live in a state with a $10 minimum wage or less, okay? There are states out there that have it. Like, I think Illinois' minimum wage now is like $12 an hour. So, girl, $2 an hour? Absolutely not. I don't care if you're young. If you're certified to be babysitting, 
Charge what you're worth. I was like astounded at how little some of these girls charged, okay? On her worst business day, she says, one time I was playing in the snow with a two-year-old boy. I threw a snowball at him and he started to cry. He snapped out of it when I showed him a huge icicle. But I learned that even though I play with little kids as if I'm their age, I'm older and stronger and need to be careful. And I'm just thinking, okay, so it was 1998 and this was a two-year-old boy. I was like, this kid is now a minimum of 26 years old. I wonder what this 26 year old man out there thinks about the fact that he is forever immortalized in this book as the little boy who cried when a snowball was thrown at him. No! Ah! Oh man, he could be dating any of you. I loved these on pages 40 and 41. It was this section called sitter season and it talked about different babysitting things you can do during different seasons of the year and different holidays. And I was just like, this is brilliant. Like it's giving specific marketing tips of how to bring new life into your business, which is so much more than almost any other business book I've ever read has done. So I just love this so much. Okay, listen, bunny business, play the bunny at Easter egg hunts, put the word out about your bunny business to friends and parents in the neighborhood. Buy colorful plastic eggs and fill them with candy, trinkets, or pennies. Hide the eggs in clever places like behind a flower pot, in a mailbox, at the bottom of a drain pipe, or in a doghouse. Then hop away and let the fun begin. So cute, right? Ghoul's Guide. Take kids trick-or-treating in your neighborhood. Before leaving, get the rules about how much candy kids can eat and when they need to be home. Follow safety rules when crossing streets. Remind kids to walk, not run. Carry a flashlight and always say trick-or-treat and thanks. This is so cute. Holiday Craft Shop. This was my favorite. And I, in the margins, I wrote, why didn't I do this? Oh, because I knew zero kids, lol. <laughs> if I knew kids, I would have been all over this one. Invite parents to drop their kids off at your Holiday Craft Shop on their way to the mall. While parents get their Christmas shopping done, you can help kids make crafts for their own holiday gifts. Choose inexpensive simple crafts such as sweet smelling sachets or evergreen wreaths. Charge parents for your time and materials. Dude, that is so cute. I love these ideas. Okay, so this is my favorite section, digital works. Money makers for computer whizzes. You guys remember when I read the Smart Girls Guide to Boys when we talked about their dating advice book and we talked about all the ways that they talk about the internet now versus what it was like in 1998 when the book was published. So this was a trip to go through, okay? Page 46, I just wrote Y2K incoming. <laughs> You'll be in demand when you can type, design, and publish on command. I said, oof, if only 1998 knew what was coming. Are you a fast, accurate typist? Start a typing service. Post flyers at school and around the neighborhood, offering to type homework, reports, and letters, charged by the number of words or pages typed. And I'm like, nowadays we could probably do handwriting services because so many people struggle with handwriting now because most of us grew up learning to type. And most people I know who are my age can't handwrite. So you would do it in reverse. You wouldn't sell it like for kids kids for typing, you would sell it for adults who need help handwriting if you're a kid who gets good at calligraphy, right? That would be something you could do. Or nowadays, since a lot of people type on their phone and like I know more and more people who don't even have their own home computer, let alone a desktop computer, which is what I use, you maybe typing services are gonna come back into style soon, who knows? Junior designer, do you have an eye for type and layout? Open your own design agency, create signs and banners for birthday parties, bake sales, or community meetings. And I was like, rip, murdered by Canva. Not true, dude. Dude, graphic designers who do a good job making custom logos and like really legitimately good graphic design work will always be in demand because you got to have a special eye for that. But starting it up as a kid, I don't think is a thing you could really do anymore because you need to know more than how to use the computer nowadays. It went up to the cloud. And you can't get it down from the cloud? Nobody understands the cloud. Page 52, I love this one. Wired ways, make money sharing your computer smarts with others. Okay, get ready for this right here on the wall. What does it say? Internet class, Saturday, May 18th. And I just wrote, what if we kissed in the 1998 internet class? <laughs> just kidding. Unless, who wants to kiss in the 1998 internet class? Organize training sessions for families or friends who have just purchased a new computer or who are learning new software. Introduce beginners to the internet by searching for a favorite sport or hobby. Teach kids how to draw with the mouse and play computer games. And I wrote, lol, Fortnite murdered this. Imagine being like, hey kids, do you want to learn how to play a computer game? And then they're like, I know how to do a Fortnite dance. And they're like, mommy, buy me a new Fortnite skin. I know how to play computer games. Do you have a PS5? Like, dude, imagine that. And where it says teach kids, I wrote old people.
You can teach old people how to use the mouse. That might be a better idea. Then we have a section about people teaming up with their friends to start a business. And then there's this one story of these two girls who team up as friends to do like odd jobs. They do like raking leaves and mowing lawns and things like that. Their worst business day made me see red, dude. Their worst business day. On one of the hottest days of summer, a neighbor called us to dig rocks out of her garden. Rocks were everywhere. After three hours, she paid us $2 each. We told her we usually make more than that, but she said she didn't think it was very hard work. We should have set a price before doing the work. And I was like, call the FTC on this bitch. Where is this woman? Where are you today, woman who paid them $2 each in 1998 dollars? So it's closer to $5, but not quite. You paid them that amount of money for three hours of work? Where's the FTC? Where are the child labor protections? Because that is disgusting. Okay, this is a true story that I remembered reading as a kid and I was very judgy of this girl. And I feel bad because this girl was 12 when the book came out, which means that she was born in 1986. So this girl is what, like 36 years old now. So to this 36 year old woman out there that I judged when reading this book, I'm very sorry. I hope you're doing fine with your business. So it talks about her business, which she does a veggie stand, car wash, and stationary design. So this girl's doing a lot of work. And how much money is she earning for her work? $350 since I started five years ago. I just wrote, oh honey. When I was a kid and read this, I remembered this girl's story specifically when I went back to this book because I remembered reading this as a kid and being like, oh dude, I'm glad I'm not you. You made $300 fifty dollars in five years like Oh no, because when I was making money, what did I want to buy was more American Girl dolls. American Girl could have roped me into an MLM if they wanted because I just wanted to make money so that I could buy more of their stuff because I like their stuff so much, right? So if I were to be making money at $350, I was like, that's gonna buy me maybe four American Girl dolls. Like that's not that, in five years, girl, no. I'm making more money in the stock market right now. And she even says $150 last summer at a vegetable stand selling fresh tomatoes, corn, lettuce, and carrots from my garden. My friend and I also held six weeks week-long car washes. I'm like, you sold all of those homegrown vegetables and had six car washes and you only made $150? Like, girl, you need to up your prices. That's what I'm telling all of these people. You need to up your prices. You are charging way too little for this stuff. So while I appreciate the business advice in this, I feel very, very bad for these kids who are being thinking that they can charge this little for all this stuff. Now, I do really appreciate this section right here, which is called Paper Trail. In the Paper Trail section, it says find actual business forms you can use at the back of this book. It shows you step-by-step -step guided how to make an order form and how to make an invoice and a receipt. And then it has actual templates to use for that. I was so impressed. I was so happy. And then it had the removable tool section where I started making Braylon Emily her own business cards just like this one. I made her another one right here that said Braylon Emily writes books. Her last name is writes books because I'm savvy writes books and she's my daughter so her name would be Braylon Emily you writes books. So Braylon Emily writes books books, Boss Babe in Training, call 6969696 for inquiries, $420 for a coaching call. So that's one. And then this business card that we went over. And then I made her, so this has a little flyer that you can pull out and copy. And so I made her a little flyer for the business too. So here it is. It says Braylon Emily, three-year-old business coach, shovel course for $420 and 69 cents. Braylon Emily will coach you to create your own course to teach others how to sell shovel to those who want to dig for gold. So shout out to Braylon Emily for making her own shovels in the gold rush course. And then the rest of the book, it had like this order form and it had this bill, this invoice and a receipt. I was just so impressed with this book. And I loved coming up with business ideas all the time as a kid. A lot of them were failures. Actually, all of them were failures. But when you're a kid, you're not always gonna be a successful boss babe because you shouldn't be having to do child labor. Speaking of child labor, I hope that Braylon Emily had a nice break while I filmed this video because her time is up. Braylon! All right, sweetheart. So what did we learn from the American Girl Doll Boss Babe book? I learned about how I need to make my prices much higher than everyone else's because some of these girls are really setting their prices too low just for the sake of being competitive, but in reality, they're not charging what they're actually worth. That's right, Braylon. We need to know our worth. And how much do we charge? How much are we worth? We're worth 420.69, blaze it. That's right, Braylon. That's exactly how much we're worth as women. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I will be reviewing more American Girl Doll books in the future, so please stay tuned for more of that. But in the meantime, though, don't forget to support small businesses and have a fantastic start to your day. Bye! Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.